It's food production, but probably not how you know it. Welcome to the new frontier in growing ingredients, synthetic biology, where paddocks, fields and orchards are giving way to labs and bioreactors. Synthetic biology is a field of research where we engineer cells uh, to design and make them do things that they normally don't do. Yeah, we're trying to work out what it could be that's leading to that drop that we're seeing. Do you know what happened compared to the previous run? No. Professor Esteban Marcellin is from the Food and Beverage Accelerator based at the University of Queensland. The project aimed at creating new technologies, products and businesses in the food and beverage sector. The field of synthetic biology has the potential to revolutionise many fields, from food uh, to agriculture, to the way we make chemicals or fuels, the way we travel. Yeah. Uh, did you add antifoam there by any chance? Because it could be sometimes when you add antifoam, um, we get a little reduction in oxygen. Okay. It's all about trying to get more sustainable ways or different ways to make the exact same products that we currently use. Synthetic biology is big business. By 2030, it is expected to be worth $40 trillion globally. The CSIRO in Australia estimates an annual revenue of $30 billion and 50,000 new jobs by 2040. Virtually every industry is trying to harness its potential, from medicine to mining, biosecurity to biofuels. In Australia, it's agriculture and food applications that are seeing the biggest capital investments and startups. It is estimated that just like chemistry was at the beginning of the century, we will now start using biology more and more just to do the exact same things we did 100 years ago, but in a more sustainable way. These are bioreactors, so we are here right now in a biofoundry, and in these bioreactors we grow tiny microorganisms to make new products. So those molecules, they can be turned into anything? Those cells are very tiny microorganisms that are able to turn a molecule as simple as a sugar into a big protein, a big molecule as a protein. And the current project we work on is in making uh, animal proteins using these microbial cells. Yeast or many other microorganisms that we use, they are the smallest factory in the world. So from one cell, we end up with billions of factories at once in what we call a bioreactor, which is this stainless steel tube where we control the environment, we feed themselves at optimal conditions so they're super happy and they reproduce and produce a lot of the metabolites that we want them to make. Synthetic biology is being heralded as having the potential to positively impact the global challenges around food production, food scarcity and sustainability. It's not universally the holy grail that's going to save everything, but it provides certain opportunities uh, to live in a more sustainable way with the exact same products. So that means we don't really need to change uh, the way we live, we just can continue in a more sustainable way by sourcing products that are less harmful for our planet. Professor Marcellin and his team at the Food and Beverage Accelerator are currently working on a number of projects, including making animal-free milk in their bioreactors. I'm not suggesting we need to stop drinking milk. Of course, everyone enjoys um, a latte in the morning with cow milk, but there are other um, products that can be made with these alternative proteins. Let's say, for example, an ice cream, a cheese, or things that we are processing. So we sometimes use dairy to process it into other products. Well, synthetic biology is perfect for that. Rather than competition with traditional producers and growers, synthetic biology advocates believe the science should be seen as complementary and a way to enhance existing sectors and markets.